Hi, and welcome to episode two of our Sabbat series. Woo! Yes. Um, in this episode, we are talking about Ostara. I keep calling it Beltane. <laughs> <laughs> two, two totally different times. Yeah, m- mentally, I'm already May. in May. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what is Ostara? So Ostara is a modern pagan holiday that celebrates the spring equinox. Ostara is often associated with themes of fertility, renewal, and the arrival of spring. And if you don't know what the spring equinox is, the spring equinox and Ostara, it's typically a celebration around the time of this time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> time yeah, time. <laughs> uh, which occurs around March 20. Ostara is Ostara. Ostara is Ostara. It's not Beltane. Um, but it, it occurs around March 20th or the 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm-hmm. And this is when day and night are approximately equal length. Yeah, time. that's what's so cool. Is equal, is it day, day and night are equal times. It's very cool. But this year it's kind of weird, I guess, probably because of the leap year. It's, yeah. it's actually on March 19th to March 20th this year. Interesting. So it's early. The Google betrayed me. Really well, did. It, nor- it normally <laughs> yeah. is. Usually it's the 21st is, is yeah. the standard yeah. date. But mm-hmm. we had whatever leap year, leap year, leap day. Yes. It added an extra day. So we're kind of off. So this year it's the 19th to the 20th. Okay. And it is the first day of spring. Woo! Woo! You but sound I feel, very excited. I feel like we didn't even get a winter. I know we didn't. It's been so warm. Now I understand that there are people who live yeah, in people up, parts up of the north are like, "What's the you about? And, no, we yeah, you had brutal snow. winter. Yeah, no, we got <laughs> we got um, no snow. I think the. I mean, it was really nice. The lowest degrees that it hit here was like probably eleven. Right. I mean, we did have a I mean, cold was, snap, but, but for like a week. Yeah, for, but no snow. And now we're in the like we were in the middle of February, mm-hmm. and the there was a high of seventy two. I know it's in, crazy in February. I know. And now we're sitting in March, and we're still having highs of like sixty in the sixties. Yeah, and like it's so nice to where you would just want to leave your back door open, and mm-hmm. it's sunny, and it's like that's not March weather. No, it's very strange because I really thought when February was so warm, I was like, okay, we're gonna have a blizzard in March. Yeah, yeah. but it hadn't happened. No, it's oh, just been knock kidding. on wood. Yeah. No, well, no. no, I would like a blizzard. I would like a blizzard too. Uh, my husband would not like a blizzard. Mine either. <laughs> but this is also a lesser Sabbath. It's not one of the fire festivals. Yes. There are four fire festivals, and this is one not one of them. Mm-hmm. This is a lesser mm-hmm. Sabbath. Apparently, I keep getting all of my Sabbaths very confused. <laughs> um, but Ostara is about celebrating. It's about balance and growth and new beginnings, where winter has finally ended or, you know, never even started. And <laughs> each day slowly gets a bit warmer. Yeah, now, I do have a theory with like like global warming mm-hmm. and like how maybe the seasons are starting to shift a bit. So maybe like I mean we didn't even really have winter, so I can't even say winter's happening at a different time now. You know, remember how we talked in our leap year episode about how we they did, had to yes. change the calendar because this it it wasn't it adding was up a little bit. Yeah. I wonder if that's going to happen. Probably. No, either. I don't know. Well, let's talk a little bit about the history of Ostara. Uh, Slavic pr- tradition celebrated the death of their winter goddess, Marzana, and rituals were created to, quote, drown this gar- goddess. Oh, How horrible is that? Awful. So that the spring and summer could come back. An effigy was created and then destroyed to represent the changing of the winter into the spring. And then in Norse paganism, I can't pronounce their word, disablat is celebrated. Wow, I think you really butchered that. <laughs> I think I probably did too. I feel like uh, it's a silent T. Disablo? <laughs> like French? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, it's celebrated at the spring equinox, and it is a celebration of the female deities. So it's actually a women power thing, which is kind of cool because we just had... Um, women's Day. Women's Day. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if they created Women's Day on this at this time because of this it's kind of kind of probably cool I, I mean, for this month it's women's correlation yeah but it was special celebration and only women performed it so like the women priestesses and all of that were the ones in charge of this ceremony mm-hmm. and the word ostara comes 
from the Anglo-Saxon goddess name Eostre, E-O-S-T-R-E. And that might not be how it's, it might be pronounced Ostara. I don't know. I mean, we've never said we were professional we that pronunciation. We said <laughs> over and over that we are not We are not professional. Pronunciation. But she represented spring and new beginnings. And she is believed to have been a part of the old high Ger- German and Anglo-Saxon pagan traditions. And so her name is linguistic linguistically connected to the concept of the east which is where the sun rises Mm -hmm. and dawn suggesting a deity symbolizing new beginnings and the awakening of nature Mm -hmm. and it's another pagan holiday that the christians use to try to convert pagans to christianity yes um and easter became the Christianized celebration of Ostara. Mm -hmm. We talk about that a lot in our Mm -hmm. other episodes. I know this is a separate series, Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to hear maybe a little bit more about maybe our opinions on that or just like how we maybe elaborated a little bit Mm -hmm. more there in some of our previous episodes. Yeah, come come listen to our other stuff. Yes. And so now let's get into like symbols of Ostara. Mm -hmm. So we now know that they... There's um I'm really struggling. There's association with fertility and renewal. Mm-hmm. And so this is kind of thought of as like the land is starting to awaken and become, you know, fertile, you yeah, know, and ready to plant and ready. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Because you now have all these beautiful blossoms and I'm really struggling. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of these fertility symbols are things like eggs. Um, eggs are considered fertility because, yes, you know, that's yes, that yes. time of year and hairs like rabbits. Are commonly associated. Not the hairs on your head? No, not the hairs on your head. <laughs> in medieval Europe, and this is so interesting to me, in medieval times in Europe, the March hare was seen as a fertility symbol and a sign of spring. Mm-hmm. So this is a species of rabbit and it's nocturnal most of the year, but in March, it's mating season. So they come out to, oh, to okay. mate. Okay. So during mating season, you see them all day long. They're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And atish- additionally, females of this species can get pregnant with a second litter while they're pregnant still with their first litter. That sounds awful. It doesn't it? Can you imagine? But this explains why they were used as symbols for fertility. And that's, you know, we've always heard they're, yeah. you know, breeding like rabbits and that kind of thing. Yeah. That's where this comes that from. That sounds horrible. And it also is why Easter has kind of incorporated the Easter bunny. Yeah. I mean, I, I I was always confused about the Easter bunny growing up. I was like, like why? Why is there a rabbit? With, like eggs. Eggs come from chickens yeah. and like birds. And yeah. I mean, not all birds. That but reminds, reptiles have eggs too. A that lot. reminds yeah. me of the Cadbury egg commercials with the yes. different animals. Yeah, and they're all like <laughs> trying to find the best match. No, but like, like you said, the egg is mm-hmm. very important, and it, it it sort of symbolizes new beginnings and potential, which. It's very true for an egg. Right. An egg <laughs> like is if, an egg. An egg is an egg. Like if you're going to be thinking of something as like a new beginning and there's like a yeah. potential, there's a potential for it to be a chicken and there's also a potential for it to be breakfast. That's true. <laughs> wow. So Ostara embodies the dynamic between light and dark, life and death, and winter and spring. Mm-hmm. So like images yeah. associated with Ostara consist of like, you know, budding plants, like mm-hmm. how I said, blooming, a newborn animal. Animals and maybe like the vibrant waxing sun symbolizing the essence of life's annual renewal. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless it, it really, when you're coming sure. to images and anything associated with new beginnings. Mm-hmm. The colors that are associated with Ostara are green and pink and blue. And most of these are pastel colors. Mm -hmm. But if you're using it in a ritual or anything associated to Ostara, it could be whatever colors you want. That's true. They could be these colors, green, pink, blue, but they could also be those rich, deep colors as well. I mean, I do think of spring as being the more pastelish colors, don't you? I do. Mm -hmm. I do, but I can also... I can also picture this time as like those rich, like mm-hmm. not hot pink, but more like a magenta, mm-hmm. like a deep magenta. Deep. Those yes. are beautiful colors. Yes. And like a blue, but not a deep navy, but like a deep royal blue maybe. Oh, I can see that. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's what I see. But green, green is kind of 
pastel y. Mm-hmm. Like, because if you get into like the evergreens, that's not, that's more winter. Mm-hmm. Green is pastel. <laughs> I kind of think of yellow, but then yellow kind of reminds me of summer. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, a pastel yellow. A pastel yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Only pastel yellow. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, foods that are associated with Ostara are obviously egg, mm-hmm. honey, sprouted greens, baked goods, and asparagus. Yum. <laughs> asparagus okay. is one of the ones that stuck out to me because it, it like sprouted greens, but then out of spout, it's like sprouted greens. It should have asparagus in it because they're sprouted greens. That's true. They sprout But it specifically the said asparagus. Uh, an so own little it's category. Own category. <laughs> um, and then some stones or crystals that are associated with Ostara are aquamarine. Amethyst, which I know is your favorite. Oh, yes. And rose quartz. Mm -hmm. Some flowers and plants that are associated with Ostara are clovers, daffodils, tulips, and there's one that crocodile. Crocus. 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 Mm-hmm. I've never heard of that. And I had really? to look it up when I, yeah. And I know what they look like, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that that was their name. Okay. And so I was like, what the fuck is a crocus? I know, right? <laughs> no, the daffodils are blooming everywhere right now, yes. at least here in Georgia. Mm-hmm. And usually during this time of year, after the daffodils come up is when we have our snow. I have but no words for that. <laughs> we're, we are late in the month. I mean, we're almost to mid-March. Don't say that. My time is going by so fast and I don't even know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about how to celebrate Ostara. So celebrate the sun because we're we're celebrating the time. It used to be more dark than light. Mm-hmm. And now we're coming into the time frame where it's going to be more light than dark. Which is so sad to me. I love the dark. <laughs> I do too. I love it when it it's so dark. <laughs> I know. I like that too. But wake up at dawn and celebrate this tipping point from the darkness into the light and then stay up and watch the sun set. It's the day where equal dark and equal light are there. How cool would would it be to watch the sun rise and the sun set to celebrate that equality? Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Decorate eggs, which Easter has incorporated this, but eggs represent luck as well as the sun. And so the bright yellow and orange yolk that's inside of the egg um, is seen as being like inside the white fabric of the goddess. Oh, but, I like that elaboration. Yeah, it's kind of odd. I never really thought of that before. But eggs are easy and inexpensive to get hold of. Well, not so inexp- well, inexpensive these well, days. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's better. But <laughs> better. But, holy moly. Um, but it, it can be a great tradition to add to your spring celebrations to decorate these eggs. Mm-hmm. So you can boil your eggs with natural dyes like red onion skins. Oh. It makes a beautiful red color. Oh, 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 cabbage. What? Purple cabbage. Yes, yes. Okay. See, I have something to input in this section, yes. finally. Um, but Or you could use regular food dye. If, no, that's true. If you don't want to. If you want to do like the more natural. Yeah, which is witchy. Purple cabbage is so cool. And you ask my husband. He hates it because I, I was like, I was making a traditional dish of his culture. Yeah. And it includes cabbage. Okay. And so. All of the green cabbages were so sad. Like, mm-hmm. none of them looked good, but all the purple ones looked amazing. I was like, can I do it with purple cabbages? He was like, yeah, I think so. It was just cabbage. And I kept <laughs> I kept the purple cabbage water. <laughs> yes, that's a I thing. did. I did. That is a thing. But I forgot to tighten the lid on the jar that I had. Oh. And so our fridge, because I put it in the fridge, obviously. I put it in the fridge. Our fridge smelled like cabbage. <laughs> For weeks. And it wasn't the good cabbage either. It was like the hot, wet, <laughs> musty cabbage. <laughs> oh, God. But that's a good point. You can actually use the water that you've used to color your eggs and keep it for spells and things. Just tighten the lid. Just tighten the lid. And don't don't leave it past a certain <laughs> expiration date. I, I, I do feel like it does go bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's fair. So also for extra de- decoration, you might wrap your egg in rubber bands before you dye it to have really, yeah. really cool designs on them. It would be cool. I'm still on the cabbage. It would be cool <laughs> to boil a cabbage leaf, mm-hmm. like purple cabbage, wrap the egg in it and see what kind of type oh, of Oh, yeah. It would be a mottled it. red. Oh, How cool is that? That would be cool. Mm-hmm. You could also use a crayon, like a white crayon that you can't see on the egg, but then you can uh, write your intentions on the egg before you dye it. A good idea. I was like, yeah, I used to do that as a kid. No, I didn't used to write intentions. I used no. to just draw, draw on, on them. White one, but like, I never. I did too. Like your sigils, you can yeah. do so much. Do your own runes if you need. If you feel like you need protection, or it may 
maybe you are really celebrating this time because you're trying to get pregnant. There's lots of couples out there that are trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, put a a sigil for fertility on the egg as you dye it. Good idea. And then eat it. And then eat it. (laughs) Yes. It's like double, like enhanced. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you can do egg hunts with your decorated eggs. Yes. You know, it's fun to. I just like eating it. (laughs) I I like eating it too, but it's fun to have family engage in egg hunts, especially when you have little children. Mm -hmm. Mine aren't so little anymore, but. You know, it, it's fun. Even grownups like it. We did one year when I was growing up, when all the kids were grown, they hid liquor bottles, the oh, little the little out airplane liquor great. bottles. <laughs> and that was our egg hunt that, that year. Fantastic. I want to be a part of that egg hunt. <laughs> How fun is that? Yeah, I might have to think about that. Egg balancing. So it is said that on the equinox, you can balance an egg. Like, I guess on the, I don't know if it's on the small end of the egg or on the fat end of the egg. But the theory is that something about the gravity changes at the time that because of the sun is equal. Okay. I don't know how scientific that really is. I don't science, know. Science says it's not so accurate okay. that you can actually do this at any time of the year. But it's a fun thing to try on Ostara. Yes. So you can have all your family or friends or whatever trying to balance these eggs. You can have make a drinking game out of it even. Yes. Just make sure that you have amethyst so you don't have hangovers. (laughs) I can you hear my eye roll? Like, can you hear it through the microphone? Everybody can hear your uh, eye rolling. Oh man! You can also do egg racing. So, like, especially if it's warm outside, like it is lately here, um, you can go outside during Ostara and play games with your family and friends. And egg racing is when you put a raw egg on a spoon and you have to race. Uh, back and forth and pass the the spoon off without breaking it. Mm-hmm. Another form of this game is when you have to carry the spoon handle in your mouth and not drop it. Oh, yeah, I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, I feel like instead of a raw egg, you should do like the ones that you decorated. So that That'd if it does fun. fall, then you don't have you don't waste like That's an egg. True. That's true. That's true. But I have seen those and um, I've never done it. Personally, I feel like I would be terrible well, yeah, at I'm it. Not so athletic. So yeah, no, like <laughs> I, I don't even think I'd. I couldn't even. I would hurt my teeth. That's what I would do. But another thing you can do for Ostara is you can create an altar. So you can include colorful candles. You know, mm-hmm. um, the colors that are associated with Ostara, like the green, the pink, the blue, mm-hmm. yellow, or you could use white if you don't have any other colors. Fresh flowers, a bowl of water to represent the, you know, the balance of the day and night. You can use that water from the egg dyes. (gasps) Use the cabbage water. The cabbage water. (laughs) And then use the stone, like use the stones and symbols that we've talked about Mm -hmm. and have, you know, Ostara altered cards. Yeah, I actually have Ostara altered cards um, for sale on my bats and bobbles at my Etsy store. Uh And so if you are scrambling or don't have time to look for something to decorate your altar with, then you can go and buy my altar cards. <laughs> yes, I concur. Shameful, shameful plug there. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. But embrace like the colors of your season, of the season on your altar. There's no wrong way mm-hmm. of doing an altar. And I mean, maybe put like, um, Maybe put an egg, but it doesn't have to be a real egg because yeah. you know, those go rotten. Like yeah. maybe put one of those plastic ones in mm-hmm. the colors. Or you can put things inside of a plastic egg that yeah. represent whatever you're trying to represent. Yeah. There are so many things that you can do. And I I mean, I can't even think of in, a single one off the top of my head right now because but like, I'm I mean, terrible at that. Sa- but... Say that you're trying to get pregnant like we talked about. I mean, I'm keep coming to this because it's a fertility yes. um, celebration, but do a rune for pregnancy and put it inside one of those eggs and keep it on your altar. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, But also Ostara, which this is one of my favorite parts is uh, about spring cleaning. Only you would think that was a favorite part of, of I love Ostara. Cleaning. I love it. It's, it's a renewal. <laughs> Y'all no, <laughs> it's renewal. So there is a reason that this time of year is great for spring cleaning. We are leaving that darkness of winter behind mm-hmm. and embracing the freshness of spring, mm-hmm. which I do agree with how much I bash like, oh, I don't like summer. It's too hot, blah, blah, blah. I do really love springtime mm-hmm. because it's not that hot. It's not that it is a renewal of feeling. summer. It really it, it just feels like you've hopeful. waken up woken up again. Yeah, yeah. It feels hopeful and promising. Yeah, because yeah. 
I mean, you, I mean, a lot of people get seasonal depression. Mm -hmm. And so spring is really where people are starting to feel themselves again, mm -hmm. feel happy, mm -hmm. etc. And so it's a great time to decorate for spring, you know, by in, it doesn't have to be a full on reblown decorate the whole house you yeah just, my husband would hate that he is yeah. very adverse to change oh i love change i know i i change everything i know all the time <laughs> my husband would be very uncomfortable i love it <laughs> and so i mean this it could just be something as subtle as buying flowers and mm -hmm. bringing them inside such as tulips daffodils whatever is blooming at the time or you could you know do a full rerun like how we did just I, said did i ever tell you that my husband the first flowers he ever gave me were daffodils no isn't that the sweetest things i am very partial to daffodils because of that i'm a i don't really know what type of flower i love all flowers just say what flower did your husband give you the first time probably roses yeah because that's the more like standard yeah. but i don't know roses to me they're too expensive for no reason I don't know what my favorite flower is. I can't wait to grow my black roses that you gave me the seeds for. Oh, yeah. I'm excited I cannot to wait. see them bloom. I'm going to be uh, planting them very soon. My husband's set up. We have a little grow, um, yeah, grow station with the lights and all that. And I've saved um, egg cartons to put all the seeds in. So I'm going to... Ooh, that's going to start my witchy Okay, garden. wait. I do have a favorite flower. What the wrong? What is wrong with me? What is your favorite a sunflower? Oh, that's I literally right. have a sunflower tatted on my neck. She's got a tattoo, y'all. <laughs> it's on the back of my neck. I forgot about that. I think it's funny because people are like, oh, do you have any tattoos? I'm like, yeah, I have a neck tattoo. And they're like, whoa, that's intense. And I'm like, it's a, literally a flower on the back of my neck. <laughs> on the it's back fun. of my neck. It's not that intense. <laughs> and I don't have a big flower on the front of my neck. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, so sunflowers are my favorite. Um, but you can restore balance by bringing new energy into your home and the energy that we just created on the podcast was very chaos, but you can also restore the balance in your home. Alivening up. I think we lived up that. Uh, oh boy. Anyways, <laughs> You know, actually, you know, speaking of new energy to your home, we had done an episode about feng shui. So this might be yes. the time on Ostara would be a great time to think about feng shui and how to bring new energy into your home. Absolutely. Balancing I energy. Good feng shui. Now, my favorite thing of any Sabbath is food. <laughs> oh, me too. I mean, the kitchen witch in me, like you heard me with the eggs. I'm like, I don't, don't hide them. I want to eat them. <laughs> so feasting is always a part of all of our Sabbaths, but a typical Ostara celebration might include, like you said, the eggs, the honey, the sprouted greens, but also hot cross buns. Oh, and, and that's kind of a cross between um, paganism and Christianity because the cross, this is, oh. you know, it, it kind of combines into Easter as well as um, Ostara, which there's nothing to say that there's wrong with combining your faith. Yeah. There's nothing wrong no, with nothing that. Nothing wrong with that. It's also a perfect time for lamb. I you love always lamb. see little pictures of little baby lambs and I things. Love and lamb. Oh, you're talking about. I don't want to eat a baby. Oh, lamb. I'm eating. I eat lamb. <laughs> <laughs> you're over here the, talking about like the animals are. They're so, so cute. cute. It's it's like, oh, like, hell no. I'm eating that thing. Food. Your husband I love made lamb. me the only lamb I've ever eaten that I actually liked. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like when I went into like, it's a part of his culture. Mm hmm. And he, I mean, they're, they're, I will triangulate just a bit. They are Eastern European. Mm -hmm. And so Eastern Europeans, they have a lot of like hearty dishes mm -hmm. because they, a lot of the culture, they didn't have a lot of money coming. Like, okay. I mean, a lot of the countries over there don't have a lot of money. Okay. And so they have to, you know, work with what they have. And so a lot of it is like, like meaty, hearty, like grainy foods. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, they're so delicious. But mm. you could, li it's literally like the bare minimum and they create these intricate, beautiful, delicious dishes. And so lamb is one yeah, of those things that I just, I was like, no, I, yeah, I don't me, want lamb. And he I was like, no, trust and me. I didn't like it. And, and you know, I told you that and, and you're like, oh no. Oh no. You've got to try this. And it so is, they came over and the most barbecued basic. for us. And it was so it's good. the most basic seasonings on it. My mouth is watering. I know. And you're like, oh yeah, you have to season the hell out of your dishes, blah, blah. I do agree. You need to season. Mm -hmm. And you need to know when not to over season mm -hmm. as well. And this is one that you, it's bare minimum, just like the 
like my three staples, which I call just like a staple. Like mm-hmm. you, you put stuff on top of this. It's like salt, pepper. Yeah. Salt, salt pepper. pepper is basic. Mm-hmm. And then you go and put your seasonings on top of salt and pepper. Salt okay. and pepper aren't like a seasoning. Yeah. They're just, they're you just have to have general, them. Right? Yeah. The core. Yes. And so it's just salt, pepper, garlic. Mm, oh. oh my gosh. It's so yeah, good. Whatever he did, that was amazing. And, you know, my husband and I were very wary skeptical, skeptical. I do remember I, I handed it to you guys because they were like lamb wraps oh yeah and gorgeous so slice them they looked beautiful them. and i'm like i don't know those ones it's not this elegant dish either no like, it's, it's a hearty it's, dish yeah, it's not this beautiful elegant thing that you're probably thinking of it's literally he cooked the lamb he pulled it right off the rack and handed it to you oh, like there's so nothing good my like, mouth is watering y'all. like the bone was wrapped in a paper towel so you wouldn't burn your fingers that's yeah, that's that was how so good from like literally cooking to mouth immediately, I, so no plate. All of our listeners are now going to go out and buy lamb for <laughs> their Ostara. So it's so good. I love lamb. Now, I love to do the egg dishes on Ostara. We actually eat all day long on a on a Sabbath. Uh-huh. Food is so essential to our celebrations and this family. Um, but I love scotch eggs. That's I love hard boiled eggs, eggs that are wrapped in the sausage. My mouth is watering. Oh, and a good mustard. Oh, oh. yeah. Sauce. Mm-hmm. Mus- mustard horseradish sauce. Horseradish. My mouth is watering. <laughs> Apparently, we're both hungry. Uh, apparently. Um, cream egg on toast. That's some of my favorite, one of my favorite breakfast dishes. That one is dishes a good one. I haven't had that in a long time. And then, so we start with the scotch eggs, cream egg on toast, and then we move into the dinner options later on. Oh, deviled eggs, too, oh. is another thing that I like. Apparently I love eggs, but if you, if you, if you know me in real life, I'm not a big egg. We're not in real life. (laughs) (laughs) My brain just had like an error. (laughs) If you know me in person, in person, not in real life, in person, I know you in real life. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a big egg fan. Just, I don't know. I could be eating an egg and my brain just goes, no, and I Uh, won't eat eggs for weeks. But like, think about quiche or frittata. I love a good quiche. Frittata is not my favorite. Oh, my husband makes a mean frittata. I love quiche and that I it's the like, quiches. He makes the frittatas. I make a good quiche. Mm-hmm. But I do quiche too. Quiche always end up turning into frittata. <laughs> yeah, they're similar, especially you know, like with your your issues with your diet, you can't have the crust, so exactly. you've got to do crustless whatever yeah. it is. And frittata is crustless. I, whenever I bake, like when I bake things that aren't sweets, I tend to over bake. And so it turns into a more drier frittata-like mat- mm-hmm. material. Material. <laughs> Texture. <laughs> okay. So I have to tell you all about one of my favorite things, artichokes. They're okay. Oh, my God. I love these things. You can cook the whole artichoke as a whole. You know, you uh-huh. buy the whole thing yeah. and you cook it in a vinegar water. My mouth is watering. And you peel off the leaves and you dip them in mayonnaise or melted butter. Oh. Oh, my God. It's so good. Mayonnaise. Or I love mayonnaise. You can make creamed artichoke hearts. You know, buy the canned artichoke hearts and make cream and gar with garlic and parmesan. My husband and I, we usually do just we just buy the cans of artichoke hearts mm. and then we cook it in whatever dish. Like we no. have a we have a dish that we got from you, where it's like chicken and rice and like lemon juice. And oh artichoke. yeah, the piccata yeah. that I I changed. Yeah, that's not a true piccata, but yeah. yeah. I, we put- oh my gosh, it's so good, and mm-hmm. it, it's so good that I made it for my husband's family and my mother in law raves about it. She always looks at me and she goes, I need that dish. And I'm like, yeah, well, right knew. now I'm not eating rice. She's like, probably like, oh, it's that witchy friend of yours, isn't it? <laughs> right now I'm I'm not eating um many carbs on um mm-hmm. uh because I have I have celiac, but then I'm also doing I don't want to call it keto because it's not keto, but I'm on keto. I, it's more of like a healthy or lifestyle because mm-hmm. People who have like PCOS. Well, it's a, it's and, a whole foods thing that you're trying to do. It yeah, is. It's like that's people better who for have your body. PCOS, they have a hard time processing mm-hmm. carbs, et cetera. So mm-hmm. I've kind of cut back on carbs. Now, I did just eat a pizza yesterday. So <laughs> a, a gluten-free pizza. So I can't really say much. But um, so right now I can't make that dish. But she's always like, I really need you to make it. It is so good. It really is. It's. I took the regular chicken piccata recipe and then I added the artichokes to it and mm-hmm. rice to it instead of my mouth is watering <laughs> instead of just serving those things over the rice i cook the rice in with yeah them. it's like integrated it's basically yeah, it's like so a good. one pot dish 
It is. You only need one pot, but I mean, you take the chicken out after you cook it and mm-hmm. put it into a bowl. So mm-hmm. basically one pot, one bowl. And after all of the stuff is cooked you and like the rice, you put together. it all back and mix oh. it together. It's a, it's amazing. It's delicious. But artichokes, if you've never had the fresh artichoke vegetable, like the whole thing, uh-huh. you should try it. Well, I know you have, and it's not it your favorite, you. <laughs> but yeah. It's okay. I like it. It's, it's, I, the, the smell of, of Ostara is vinegar because I color the Easter eggs. You can with also the vinegar. clean the vinegar. That's true too. But I cook artichokes in the vinegar. And so mm-hmm. to me, I always associate Ostara with vinegar, which is also the egg coloring and these artichokes. Yeah. So y'all go look up some recipes with artichokes. Yeah. You will not be disappointed. And then lemons. So this is one of Ren's favorite things. She Love loves lemons. her lemons and she makes homemade lemonade. Um, you use lemons in your kitchen witchery stuff. I do. And I use it in my, my cleaning stuff. I mm-hmm. use it, I, I use it in every aspect, basically. Mm-hmm. And another thing that you might want, if it's still cold where you are and you're wanting that greenery, not us. I know not here, but if it's like still cold up where you are, split pea soup with a ham hock oh. is an excellent hearty meal and it it has that beautiful green color to it that can help you remind you of spring is beautiful coming. green it is a beautiful green or like a swamp swamp, swamp witch <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's a beautiful green especially if you're still up north where it's still the greenery hasn't come out yet mm-hmm. you know although i don't know this year what how it is up there are they yeah. warm up there too i don't know i don't know either. i don't know but yeah, so I love the color of the split pea soup because it's got that spring green color. Yeah. 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 No, I do like a good split pea soup. Now I have had yours and it's delicious. Mm. Um, I've never personally made some just because. Well, and you can't now that you're eating keto-ish. Keto health hearty. Food. Yeah, because it's got know. it's full of carbs, although it is a natural food. It is. But peas are my favorite food. I mm-hmm. love peas. I like peas and you too. can't have it when you're eating this low no, carb and all of that. They're full of carbs. They are so full of carbs. Now, mm-hmm. I'm happy that we can have green beans, mm-hmm. some green beans, not too much. You no, know, one of my favorite things to do is to go with you, my husband and you and your husband to the Wild Wing Cafe and eat their green beans. Absolutely. Oh, my God. But let me just say, um, green beans, mm-hmm. I'm, I've am i figured out a recipe to make them at home. Like, really? Like the Wild Wings? No, 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 Or no. the Wing World? or Whatever. It's, I don't, it's called, it's a franchise. Okay. Something. <laughs> Something. But it, you, put, you put them in the microwave. Okay. Really? <laughs> Uh, yes. And now everybody's going, you're not a kitchen witch if you use a microwave. Yes, hey, the fuck I am. <laughs> so this is the best way that I've found to make these green beans. So you okay. get fresh green beans. Okay. And I've tried every way. I've tried steaming them. I've tried just cooking them on the stove and butter or whatever. And n- you don't get that good consistency. Mm-hmm. And I won't fry them because I don't cook with heavy oils like yeah. that. Yeah. You've, you've fried them before I mean, I, and they I, were yeah. really good. But I just don't like eating that. If I'm going to eat green beans consistently, yeah. I'm not going to eat like that kind of fried. Fat. Now, yeah. it's good every now and then for mm-hmm. me. You know, if you want to well, do it okay, every day, so then great. The go, microwave go and what? So you microwave it, but you put like a handful in and you put um, butter on top, okay. like a chunk of like cold butter. Okay. And so it melts onto all of the green beans. Okay. And then after, so I put them in for about seven to 10 minutes. So that in the they microwave. Can, and, yeah. Wow. So they, they, they can get that soft, but uh-huh. not squishy consistency. They still have some crunch, but they're okay. soft in some spaces. Okay. And then after you take them out, you mix them in the butter, you sprinkle salt and garlic on it. Oh. And it's kind of like, because the my butter's salted as well. Mm-hmm. So it's salted garlic butter. Oh my gosh. And they are the best way that I have found for me to eat them at home. That oh sounds Oh my gosh, lovely. they're so good. And then I make them since we eat chicken wings a lot. Yeah, we do chicken too. Chicken wings is one of those things it's that whole we can food. have. It's, yeah. yeah. And um, so we eat chicken wings. And we can't have fries and stuff anymore. So I make green beans on the side. And then the butter underneath, I dip my chicken wings in the garlic butter. It's oh, my so God. That sounds lovely. My chicken yeah. wings, I usually season them heavily with like a whole ton of stuff. And then you have the garlic butter on the side. So I feel good. like garlic comes. Doesn't garlic come at this time of year? Isn't it more like a winter to I actually spring? Don't oh, yeah. I don't know when garlic. Maybe um 
Greg knows. Greg, Greg our patron knows. Greg knows. Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so let's get off the food subject. Okay, off the food. And so um, Ostara is a great uh, time to spend time outside. For sure. And I would say it's been, you know, very warm here recently. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a great time to take a walk in nature, ride your bike, go running, jogging, drink, whatever drink. you want to call outside. Yeah, yeah drink and on your deck. <laughs> whatever it may be. You can have lemon cocktails, mm -hmm. you know, make something out of lemonade, you know, hard spiked lemonade. Mm -hmm. Or if you just don't even want alcohol together, just do lemonade. Alcohol. What are you talking hey, about? Listen, there are some, there are some, and I completely that's very understand. True. And that's 100%. Very valid. Okay. Absolutely. And so um, you, there's so much you can do during this time to honor Ostara mm -hmm. by cooking, going outside, Anything that you feel in yourself is mm -hmm. honoring Ostara, do it. Mm -hmm. Like we we don't like rules here. <laughs> yeah, do what you want. Do, she says, do what That's you want. Thing. Um, if there's something that resonates with you, do it. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say, like that is a big part of craft. And if you're trying to learn and you're new, and that's why you're here listening to our Sabbath series because you're trying to specifically know and understand the Sabbaths. If anything resonates with you, let's say eggs don't resonate with you, mm -hmm. but something else does, mm -hmm. then use that yeah. instead of eggs. What what resonates with you as far as renewal? What yeah. what does that bring in your mind? Yeah. And, and use that. Like, I understand. Like if you're vegan mm -hmm. in any way, you don't want to have lamb, you don't want to have meat, mm -hmm. you don't want to have eggs. Find something right. that really works for you mm -hmm. in this case. I can't think of anything on the top of my I mean head. the green beans. Yeah, yeah. You, plenty of vegetables. Maybe use tofu in some way. I don't know. Yeah, I, sure. I know that's kind of like terrible. Like, oh, vegan tofu. No, no, no. Like, I'm just saying, I mean, like, I like a good tofu, but I like tofu too. Um, any if there's anything to bring that renewal and have that feeling and set intentions, then yeah, I want I you to do it your way. A lot of the things that we hear from people are they think you know, how do I do this? Or, you know, and there is no right and wrong no, way. It's a feeling. Yes. They want us to tell them, oh, you do step one, two, yeah, and three. You and have it to isn't buy like eggs that. And you have to yeah. go for a walk and you have to eat this. I want These you to just do it how it's general yes, ideas because exactly. you might not have an idea. You yeah. might not. And so this might spark something right. and be like, oh, instead of doing that, like how they said, I'm going to do this because of this. Mm -hmm. We want you to be yourself and enjoy your craft the way you're meant to enjoy it. Not yes. just because we said, oh, the colors are green, pink, and blue. Now, if you think it's black, it's black. It's black. It's whatever exactly. you want it to be. Yes. yes. So another thing you can do is garden work. Tell me about it. Yes. Yeah, so depending on where you live, you may actually be able to start doing garden work now. Like probably in indoors yes. that we can. <laughs> yes. So work your garden beds. My husband's actually been out there the past couple of weeks working. We use uh, raised garden beds, which is a whole thing. Yeah. But he they're ready for um, the soil now. He's going to go and buy soil this week and... We're going to start getting everything ready, but we're going to do our planting inside because I still don't trust the weather to not to not go. I've made that mistake thing. before. Yeah. So but, you know, if you do live in a colder cl climate or you don't want to worry about a snap frost or whatever, plant your seeds indoors until they're ready to transplant outside. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've been getting our garden space ready. I plan to use Ostara as a day for working with my seeds. I'm very excited for the witchy garden that, that I know, I know. Seeds. And I am going to use Ostara because to me, that is, it's a day of balance, a day of hope for the future. And so I am going to take time on that day, even though it's a weekday and we have work. Yeah. Um, I am going to do that because to me, that is important. And I am dreaming about my vegetables and I'm dreaming about my witchy garden. And I, I must say that I'm trying to figure out how to design a witchy garden without my neighbors, you know, getting all freaked out because there's a pentacle or a pentacle. Uh, whatever. I know, right? Um, you can also make pastel candles and you can oh, put yeah. herbs in them or not. Oh, yeah. 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 I like that idea. That's a great, fun thing to do on Ostara. Mm -hmm. I, it's tedious work, though, to make candles. It is, but if you're a it's creator, gratifying. it is gratifying. That's a uh -huh. perfect word for uh -huh. it. See, sometimes I have good words. <laughs> <laughs> you always have good words. Uh, not really. <laughs> um, but you can always honor. See, I'm not good with words. You can always... <laughs> 
have rituals and ceremonies during Ostara as Mm -hmm. well. So pagans and Wiccans, or maybe if you're not even categorized as anything, maybe you're just Mm -hmm. practicing. Mm -hmm. Many people engage in rituals and ceremonies and spell work on Ostara or nearing Ostara. I think it would be a super strong time to do balance spells and that kind of thing. Healing spells. I mean, you would bring that. I mean, you're you're honoring the returning of the warm. Mm -hmm. This is a great time to set intentions of personal growth, renewal, whatever it is. Gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think some of the spells you could think about doing at this time would be purification. We're cleansing, getting out the old, bringing in the new growth, transition, positive energy, zeal. I love that word. Motivation. (laughs) It's just such a cool world. Zeal. Sort of like lapis lazuli. (laughs) Lazuli. Lapis lazuli. Yeah, we've been wrong before. Yeah. Many times. Um, Motivation, balance, of course. Birth. It's a great time for spells dealing with birth or rebirth. Revitalization. Good fortune. Kindness. Joy. I mean, just the joy of embracing this new season that's about to come into our life. Fertility. Hopeful intentions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can also do divination at this time. Oh, yeah. We love divination. Mm-hmm. And we this... just did a whole episode on divination at the beginning of the new year. Mm-hmm. New year divination. Yeah, new year divination. Mm-hmm. And meditation. And you get a bonus if you meditate outside, if you if your environment allows meditation outside on Ostara. Yes. I mean, you can meditate in the snow or cold. And, and that's true, too. And you can have a snow altar. There is nothing Ooh, that says you can't make an Ostara an <laughs> altar outside in the snow. We're going to do a snow altar alter episode in the middle of summer. I love that idea. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Create seed bombs. Okay. So you put your intentions into these seed bombs that you make. You can go and look up how to do this on Google. There's all kinds of articles out there. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of it is newspapers that you wet and you put seeds in and you roll them up into um, like little round bomb balls. looking thing balls. yeah little balls um you can put them in t- you can make um seed what is it called greeting cards oh where you actually roll out the paper and you put the the seeds in it and you make that you fold it up and it's oh. got seeds in it and they just tear it and plant it yeah, in their yard I love those um and that is a great fun way to give to other people on the equinox um, a popular choice is wildflowers because those make yeah. the great seed yeah. bombs for sure. But feel free to pick your favorite. You know, you can air dry clay. You can do potting soil. You can do, like I said, you can make paper out of mm-hmm. wood pulp. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do. So much. Just, you know, a quick Google search is and, also. And how fun to be able to give a gift on a on a Sabbath that isn't really meant for gift giving. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it just processed in my head what you said. I was like, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) No, I think of this time a lot for, you know, rebirth rituals. Oh, for sure. Because like this is the life, the death, and you have those rebirth cycles. Mm -hmm. And I am one who is, I'm very, I don't, I don't have a set belief. But Mm -hmm. if there were to be something true, I would believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've always thought about that when I was younger. I've I've thought about that. So any sort of, you know, rebirth, recycle, this is a great time to honor that. And Mm -hmm. it's a great time to have a ritual for that. Mm -hmm. So you can honor those who have passed in maybe a sweet, respectful way with like the colors and candles and like a low dim that opportunity. Idea because usually you think of honoring ancestors as a heavier, dark thing, whereas mm-hmm. Ostara is a bright, very bright light yeah. thing. And you and can honor maybe yeah. your ancestors, or if you do believe in reincarnation, you can honor those past lives that you've had. Mm-hmm. And so I think this is a great time to do that. And I, I tend to, during this time, think about past lives i think about past lives all the time and where i could have been <laughs> be and real. <laughs> yeah um and where my my dead body is right now like my past one is and so and so forth but i do like to think about that especially during ostara and this is totally off topic but think about if you are reincarnated all the skeletons that you have out there all your meat suits all your meat suits cuz your soul is the thing that's going yeah. forward mm-hmm. but think about 
all all your little skeletons are out there somewhere. Somewhere. Or we could all just be the same person, like the same energy living separate lives and different experiences all at once. That's true. I think about that a lot. Yeah, we, yeah, we like to get drunk and have these conversations. (laughs) Yes, we do. That's why we have a podcast. That's why we have a podcast. Um, But it's also a time for rituals for renewal, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe renewing commitments that you had, like spiritual commitments, partner commitments. This would be a great time to renew wedding vows. It it would be. It's a great time. And it's also a good time for rededication, you know, deciding to create a deeper connection to those in your life. That could be, you know, a spouse or it could be a child or it could be a father or a grandfather or, or a best friend or anybody exactly i'm going to renew my connection with you how so i don't know but we have to figure out a way <laughs> it has been a a, a rough couple of months to me and 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 the last couple of years you've been super important in my life Aw, we should. Let's we not should. get so gushy. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so because fertility is a big symbol of this time, you might want to do some sex rituals. How is that great for out of that? Great. No more gushy. <laughs> but especially if you're wanting to get pregnant. I mean, I hate to harp on that, but there are people out there who really are trying to do that. And this is a time of year that might might help. Um, you know, sexual relations were pretty much a given for this holiday in the past. That was that was part of how they celebrated. It was understood that everybody was going to go out in the woods and have sex. I mean, oh. it, it, that was the thing that it's all about fertility and sex was a huge part of this um, holiday. holiday, I guess. Celebration. Yeah. So why not incorporate that into our mar- modern yeah, lives? Sure. Yeah. Let's do some sex. Do some sex, man. Great. <laughs> Um, I think that's all we've got about Ostara. It's such a lovely time. It of year. is. I mean, there's a there's a lot of information out there too, and mm-hmm. this is just like us, like the iceberg. Yeah, and I know we're doing this because we wanted to go de- in deep mm-hmm. of the sabbats, but like, how deep can we go without being? 20 hours long. I mean, that's true too. There are there is definitely 20 hours long worth of stuff to talk about. And I think you all need to find your own path. Yeah. And I know it's not as easy as going uh like Googling, um, how can I incorporate blank into Ostara? Just I mean, I, I hate saying just do it, you know, but mm-hmm. like if you do think that there's something that you need to incorporate, you don't have to replace yeah. anything if you there's just want no to, right and you wrong just add it into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There is no right and wrong. And I think that's what a lot of, I mean, I hate, I hate this term, baby witches. I really don't like that yeah. term. But that's what a lot of them are worried about is, I want to do this right. I want to go, how do you do this? And, and I mean, there are things that you have to be very careful about. Sure. And you have sure. to be cautious. Don't go, you know, summoning demons and you don't know what's right. going on. I, I don't advise summoning demons at all. Right. Uh, even though we don't really know what a demon is per yeah, se. Yeah, that's a whole different topic. But... There are things such as Ostara and honoring Ostara. There is no right and wrong and in trying you know, to honor it in the way that you want to. If honor you it. are a baby witch and you this is your time to try to figure out how to incorporate this spirituality into your life, Ostara is a perfect place to start. Oh yeah, it's not a new year by any means. Our new year is usually Samhain, mm-hmm. but it is. A perfect time to jump in with both feet and say, I'm embracing this new witchy part of me. Yeah, I like how you put that. Mm-hmm. Um, do we do our outro? <laughs> I don't know that we do. Um, so anyways, thank you for being here mm-hmm. in our Sabbath series. This is episode two. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are happy to be here. If you have any questions, please email us, reach out on to our on our social media platforms, go to our website, whatever it is. Um the reason of us having this series is to help educate and enlighten people. Mm-hmm. And maybe you guys can enlighten us in yeah. any way. Help help you find a path that works for you. And mm-hmm. you, we love to ha- hear from you. And we have really do. You help us find our path. We're not set on our no, path. By any we're means. not perfect. And yeah. we don't have all the information. And that's one thing that I, I really love about our podcast. Me too. Is because we know we aren't perfect. We know we make mistakes. And it's okay for you too, too. And and absolutely. So we'll be back. Um, our next Sabbath. I don't even know what it is off the top of my head. You'll know when it comes out. We'll know when it comes out. <laughs> so love you guys. Thank you. Bye.